What's up, YouTube? Undercover Redneck here. Uh, I want to talk to you today about carving. Uh, before I do that, I just want to say I do not consider myself a professional uh, wood carver. I consider myself to be a novice who's made enough mistakes um, that I could share some of that with you, experience with you. Uh, starting with... Uh, this is the first spoon I have ever carved right here. It's huge, right? I mean, I could literally probably beat someone to death with this thing. Um, it's, it's huge. So it took me three months to carve that stupid thing. And I made my number one mistake was that I used dry wood. No, you're supposed to use green wood. So that... The dry wood cuts extremely hard. Don't use dry wood, use green wood only, okay? Uh, here are the tools I use, some good tools. Uh, I've got a Nerex, a lot of Nerex stuff here. If you're not familiar with Nerex, Nerex is a Czechoslovakian tool manufacturer. And um, with the exception of this, this is a Mora 106, 3.2, model 106, 3.2 inch blade. Awesome. Now, if you don't have one of those and you're just starting out, get get one. They're tremendous knives. Um, Scandi grind. It's not a flat grind. So, Scandi grind. Make sure you don't mess up the grind on it. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, when I got finished with this, uh, with the large spoon here, first of all, that's maple. Um, I treated it with mineral oil food grade mineral oil, all right, which is fine. Um, but here's the thing that I have found out about food grade mineral oil is that you have to replenish it. It is not a permanent thing, right? You don't seal it and you're done with it. Um, so you always have to apply it. Probably not the best choice, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna talk to you also about coconut oil and um, the thing that I have found out to be the best solution in my opinion is flaxseed oil and I'll tell you why in a minute okay so there's the tools that I used along with my hatchet to craft this bad boy okay um, I have a video it's called pandemic bug out if you haven't seen that yet um, in that it's a primitive camping experience I shared a little bit um, but I carved this okay um, I rough formed it with my hatchet and then found is that it's okay to have entry-level tools. It's just going to take you a while, okay? So what I did is I formed this with my hatchet and then basically I just, the only thing I used on it was my 106, okay? Um, and then I sanded it. That's been sanded. This has been sanded. Um... It turned out beautiful. No power tools, okay? It's just um, a knife and some sandpaper. That's all that that is. You can see the handle's a little crooked, right? Um, I think part of that comes from the grain also. In fact, I'm right-handed, um, but I'm learning, right? So these are all things you need to be aware of. So if you're right-handed, you have to understand that when you carve, or left-handed, it doesn't matter, you either have to use both hands or you have to understand how to work wood um, in such a way that, you know, comes out straight, right? Because you're going to be natural tendency uh, to create things that are, that are not straight, okay? So that's the second thing that I've ever carved. And while I was carving this, um, um, I had the idea I wanted to make a spatula for my mom. Her birthday is coming up. And so I started on a spatula, rough forming a spatula. You can see that video, I'll, I'll drop a, a link to it right here. Um, so click on that if you wanna see how I rough form a spatula. But that rough form that in that video actually turned into this spoon. Now, what did I do wrong here? <clears throat> well, I used the food grade mineral oil again on that. That was before I knew some of the other um, alternatives. People online talk about coconut oil. Uh, 
you know, I don't know. I've not, I've not, I've not used it. Obviously, coconut oil is solid. Um, I've cooked with this coconut oil I'm showing you. It's good stuff. I really like it. Um, but I haven't used it on a, on a, on a piece of wood yet. So, uh, I'm kind of afraid to, but I'm going to give it a try probably. All right. I don't know if it's going to be permanent. Uh, I kind of doubt it. Strongly doubt it. But this flaxseed is, right? So the flaxseed is cold pressed. Um, one of the things I have found out is that if you, if you use stuff that is not cold pressed, what ends up happening is they often boil it or use heavy metals to extract the oil from the seed. And then you've got a toxic um, product you, you can't use on wood, especially uh, as long as you intend to use it to cook with, you, you, cannot, you cannot use it on wood, okay? It's toxic. So this stuff you can, all right? Um, but you've got to get the cold pressed and um, you know, there's even ingredients here on how to, on how to eat, how to consume it. So um, I know it's consumable. Anyway, so with my spoon, with my spoon, I use the flaxseed, but with the spoon, I also got some new tools. Now, like I said, there's nothing wrong with those tools, <clears throat> but if you don't want to take a bunch of time, you've got to have better tools. So this is, these are the tools that I, that I have, that I've invested in, that I've, that I use now. Okay. I've got another Mora. This is another 106. Um, I've got a Mora, um, a uh, hook knife. It's a right-handed hook knife. Why did you get a right-handed? Because I'm right-handed. It's if you get a, if you get a right-handed or left-handed, um, the blade is not. It doesn't have an edge on both sides. So if you do want to get your finger behind that and give it some give push with it a little bit more, um, but this knife is awesome. It is sharp, 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 and I love it. I just absolutely love it, and I'll show you what it did here in a minute. Um, if you look, it's it's a thinner blade, which allows you to pivot a little bit more. Um, and and this blade here, not picking on Derek's, okay, but you can just see how much thicker, wider, I should say, that blade is, which is not good. This allows you to get in there and do a lot more fine work. Um, highly encourage it. Not a ton of money. Easy to get. So when you're making bowls, when you're making, when I say bowls, I'm talking about the bowl of the spoon. You've got to have something that'll take out a lot of material. Um, this thing right here, that's a feel. Um, it, it's, it's a seven, right? So the sweep is a seven and it's a 20 millimeter. Um, guys, this thing is wicked, wicked sharp. Um, if you want to make quick work, you know, use this thing. Get get something like this. If you're serious about it, you know you want to do it. You know you want to carve. This thing right here is probably the sharpest tool I own. It is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. Um, and I'll give it. I'll give you a little bit of a little background on on the gouge thing. Okay, so. When I was working on this, before I got that gouge, when I was working on this spoon here, I don't have, I don't use a vise, I just use my hands. Um, anyway, I was using this gouge right here on my on my bowl, and a little, you know, just cranking on it, right? Crank, 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 it slips out, bam, next thing you know, and it, that's healed up, or obviously, but <clears throat> I guess what I'm trying to say is, Sharper tools don't require you to work as hard, okay? And you can buy middle-of-the-road tools, in my opinion. It'll work, but <clears throat> this stuff right here, I mean, this is some good, in my opinion, some good stuff, okay? So this is Feel, P-F-E-I-L, uh, I think that's how it's spelled, it's Swiss. And then I've got the carving knife too, okay? Um, I haven't used this as much. I haven't used I haven't learned to be good with this yet, but it is extremely sharp and I love it. I'm gonna use it more. 
Um, I want to do a ladle next, and I'm sure that'll come in handy with, with the ladle, okay? So <clears throat> that's enough about tools, and a little bit about, um, you know, a sealant. What do you, what do you use to seal with? So now I want to talk to you about this spoon I just did, okay? Um, I didn't use any, any sandpaper at all on this spoon. What I've learned is, to some carving uh, enthusiasts, using sandpaper is uh, sacrilegious, right? It's, it's, it's frowned upon. Um, so not, not all carvers feel that way. I, I don't, I don't want to stereotype everybody, but I'm just saying the idea here is, um, a little bit less of just forming a, a, something I can use to, to, to eat my cereal with and a little more art, right? But I got right into this. You can tell, um, really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Um, as I was carving, that's not a mistake. I just, um, there, there, that was in the wood. I didn't see it. I thought it would come out, but as it turned out, it's there and it's okay. It gives it character, but you can tell the knife marks. Um, I think it's cool. I like it. And this is, this is one I'm going to give to my mother for her birthday it's coming up. So I'm going to, I'm going to send her this spoon. I'm going to send her that spatula too. Okay. But this was treated in flax seed. And uh, I'm excited to see how it holds up for her. Because she's going to use it. She's not, she's not going to just put it in a drawer. She's going to use it. So, um, I guess what I would say to you is don't, don't carve dry wood. Uh, I would encourage you not to use mineral oil even food grade mineral oil on your product. Either use use flaxseed oil or walnut oil, all right? That would be another thing that I've learned, right? After doing it, I'm not saying I did it wrong with that one and this one with the mineral oil, but it's you're gonna have to keep oiling it in order to keep it protected. And then the other thing is having good tools, right? Good sharp tools. Again, nothing wrong with those tools, but are they as sharp um, as these guys? No, no, nope, they're not. Not even close. It's it was night and day. Um, it was incredible. But uh, anyway, so and then my tr trusty hatchet, right? I want to do I want to do a ladle next. I just went out looking for some cherry. I'd like to find a hardwood, and um, I'd like to make a really decorative uh, ladle that that maybe I could give my wife or, um, you know, keep it as an heirloom or give it to my daughter if she, if my wife doesn't want it. But so anyway, that's what I've learned so far about carving. I would encourage you to get a knife, right? Get a couple knives. I think these two knives together were 40 bucks, around 40 bucks. They're both 20, might, one might be 30. So you're talking 50 bucks. Um, you can get them on Amazon, but these two knives right here go a long way in getting you started and being able to make spoons, all right? You don't really need the gouge to do something like this. It's nice to have, but you can do without it. Um, so if you're into, into carving, you know, I would encourage you. It's, it's a lot of fun. If you're not, yeah, check it out. You know, you know, just pick up a piece of wood, use green wood. And um, just, you know, fool around with it and see what happens. But uh, I hope this was helpful to you. And uh, I'm, I'm always looking for new ideas, ways to improve. One of the things I want to do is instead of soaking this in a pan, and I'll maybe I'll post some pictures of how I soaked it in the flaxseed. But my thought is get a big container like that and just drop them right in the top and let them soak in there. Um, that's probably one of the things I'll try next. So anyway, hope it helps. Um, enjoy your carving, right? Make something cool. Undercover Redneck out.